This video is about graphing exponential functions. So we're going to be looking at how to draw the graphs of those. And before we get too far, uh, exponential function has the form f of x equals b raised to the x. b has to be something greater than 0 and not equal to 1. So if b were equal to 1, then the function would be f of x equals 1 raised to the x power, and 1 raised to anything is just 1. So really, this would still be the same as just f of x equals 1, which um, we know is a line. So, so that's why um, b can't be equal to 1. And then if b were something negative, let's say b were equal to negative 2, then we would have f of x equals negative 2 raised to the x power. And then um, the power of x would determine what sign this had. So if x was equal to 2, then f of 2 would be um, positive 4, because negative 2 squared is positive 4. But f of 3 would be negative 8. And so this would be going back and forth between positive numbers. And um, exponential functions are nice, smooth curves. So b can't be negative, and b also can't be equal to 1. Um, the properties of exponential functions, if they have the form f of x equals b raised to the x, um, and they have to be exactly in that form, nothing else, so just some number raised to the x power, then they have the following properties. Um, they have an inverse, and so that means that they're 1 to 1. They pass through the point 0, 1. So all exponential functions that have this form pass through the point 0, 1, because this b raised to the 0 power would, is always going to be um, equal to 1, no matter what b is. Um, they don't have an x-intercept, so they never cross the x-axis. And if b is greater than 0, the function increases. If b is something between 0 and 1, so it's a fraction less than 1, um, then the function decreases. So those are just some properties that these graphs have. So our first graph is going to be of y equals 3 to the x. And so we're going to make a table. And for this first one, we're going to plot the points negative 2, um, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And so this would be 3 raised to the negative second. And that's the same as 1 over 3 squared. So that's 1 ninth. And 3 to the negative first is 1 third. And 3 to the 0 is 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. 3 to the first is 3, and 3 squared is 9. So our first point is negative 2, 1 ninth. So negative 2, and we're really close to the x-axis here. And then we our next point is the point negative 1, 1 third. And our next point is 0, 1. And then we have the point 1, 3. And the last point here is 2, 9. And so um, this function gets really big really fast, and it gets really close to the x-axis, but it never actually crosses it. So if we draw a smooth curve in here, we can get a good idea of what this graph looks like. So this is the graph y equals 3 to the x. Okay. Our next one here is y equals 3 raised to the x plus 1. So what does it do when we add 1 to our function? So again, we'll make a table. And this time, we'll only plot three points, negative 1, 0, and 1 for our x values. So if I plug negative 1 in here, I get 3 to the negative 1 plus 1. And so that's 1 third plus 1, which is 4 thirds. And then when I plug 0 in there, we get 3 to the 0 plus 1, which is 1 plus 1, or 2. 
And then when I plug 1 in there, I get 3 to the first plus 1, which is 3 plus 1, or 4. So my first point is negative 1 and 4 thirds. My next point is 0, 2. And my next point is 1, 4. So um, if we were to plug negative 2 in there, then we would get 3 to the negative second plus 1. And 3 to the negative second, remember, was 1 ninth. And so that's 1 ninth plus 9 ninths. And so that gives you 10 ninths, or 1 and 1 ninth. So it's going to get really close to 1 this time, but never actually cross that. So it starts up high and comes down low next to this, what we call an asymptote. So this is um, a line that this graph will never cross. So just like with other functions, um, this is a transformation, and it moves our graph up one unit. Okay, so just took the graph that we just did, and it shifted it up one unit. And so here, the asymptote is the y-axis, or sorry, the x-axis. And on our other graph that got shifted up one unit, it was um, the line y equals 1. On our next graph, so here we have y equals 3 to the x minus 2. And so the plus 1 shifted it up one unit, so this minus 2 is going to shift it down 2. So I know that instead of having the x-axis be my um, horizontal asymptote. My horizontal asymptote now is going to be down two units at y equals negative two. That line is going to be our asymptote. So plot your three points. So negative one, zero, and one. Plugging negative one into this function gives me three to the negative first minus two. And so that's one third minus two. And so that's one third minus six thirds, which is negative five thirds. Plugging zero in there, we get three to the zero minus two, which is one minus two, or negative one. And then plugging one into this function, we get three to the first minus two, which is just three minus two, or one. So we have negative one and negative five thirds. And negative 5 thirds is 1 and 2 thirds. And then we have 0, negative 1. And we have 1, 1. And so again, we know that this graph is going to come down and get very close to this asymptote, but never actually cross it. And then it goes up very fast. Okay. And then make sure that you label your points that you put on your graph. Our next example here, we have y equals 3 raised to the x plus 1. So now this whole x plus 1 is in the exponent this time. And so we're going to plot our three points, negative 1, 0, and 1. And so when we plug that in, we get 3 raised to the negative 1 plus 1, which is 3 to the 0, or 1. And plugging 0 in there gives us 3 to the 0 plus 1, which is 3 to the first, or 3. And plugging 1 in there, we get 3 to the 1 plus 1, or 3 squared, which is 9. So we have negative 1, 1. And we have 0, 3. And we have 1, 9. And so this plus 1 is 
up in the X point, so it's not shifting it up or down like we had seen before. So my asymptote is still going to be the X axis here. And so the equation of the asymptote is y equals zero. And again, it's going to get very, very close to that asymptote, but never actually cross it. So there is our graph. Oh, let me get that negative sign in there better. Negative one, one, zero, three, and one, nine were our points. So what this did to our graph is um, it just shifted it to the left one. Just like we had transformations before. Um, these transformations are similar to those. So the plus one in the exponent shifted the graph to the left one. So this negative two now is going to shift the graph to the right two. So again, it's not going to be shifting it up or down because that uh, minus two is up in the exponent. So our asymptote is still going to be the x-axis or the line y equals zero. And we're going to plot our three points. Negative one, zero, and one. And so when we plug negative one in there, we get three raised to the negative one minus two, which is three to the negative third. And so that's one over three cubed, which is one twenty-seventh. And then when we plug zero in there, we get um, three to the zero minus two, or three to the negative second. And so that's going to be one over three squared, which is one ninth. And then when we plug one in there, we get three to the first, one minus two, which is three to the negative first. And so that's one ninth, or sorry, one third. So um, negative one and one twenty-seven, so that's very close to this asymptote. And then zero one ninth again is still pretty close. And then one third is one third of the way up, so it's getting very close to there. Um, at two is when it's going to be equal to one. And then at three um, is when we're finally going to be up at x equals three. So putting a couple more points in there might be a good idea for this one when it's getting shifted to the left like that. Um, so the three points that we plotted though were negative one, one twenty seventh. Oops, let me put that in the right place. And zero one third, one ninth, oh my gosh, and two one third. So again, very close to this, and then it goes up um, to the right. So on this next graph, we're going to graph both y equals two to the x and y equals one half raised to the x, both on the same graph. And so I'll do the first graph in red. So zero, um, negative one, zero, and one. So when I plug negative one in there, I get one half, one over two. When I plug zero in there, I get one, and when I plug one in there, I get two. So I have the points negative one, one half, zero, one, and one, two. And so this isn't being shifted at all, and so our asymptote, actually for both the graphs, will be the line y equals zero. And again, it gets very close to the um, x axis and then it goes up rather quickly. And then in blue we'll do the graph for um, one half to the x. Plotting the same points, negative one, zero, and one. And so when I plug negative one into this, what happens to the fraction inside here is it flips upside down. 
And so that would be 2 over 1, or just 2. And anything raised to the 0 power is 1, so we get um, 1 half to the 0 is 1, and then 1 half to the first power is 1 half. So we have the point negative 1, 2, and the point 0, 1, and the point 1, 1 half. So this is the graph for y equals 1 half x. And this is y equals 2 to the x. And so they're reflected across the y axes from one another. And we can see that if we rewrite this, then 1 half is the same as 2 to the negative first. So really we have 2 raised to the negative first raised to the x, and what we do with exponents when we take one power raised to another power is we multiply them. So this is the same as 2 raised to the negative x. And remember when we um, have a negative sign right in front of x, that means that we're going to be flipping over the y-axis. That was one of our transformations from earlier this semester. And let me just go in and label all my points. So that's done. 1, 2, 0, 1, and negative 1, 1 half. And for the other graph, we had negative 1, 2. Again, we had the point 0, 1 for both of them. And then we also had the point 1, 1 half. So our next graph is y equals 1 half to the x minus 3. And remember, when we subtract 3 from something, it shifts our graph down 3 units. So instead of having the x-axis be our asymptote, our new asymptote is going to be at negative 3. So that's line y equals negative 3. And so we can plot our points. And we want to plot negative 1, 0, and 1. So remember, this is moving it down 3. And so plug negative 1 in there, and we get 1 half raised to the negative first, minus 3, which is 2 minus 3, or negative 1. Plugging 0 in there, we get 1 half to the 0 minus 3, which is 1 minus 3, or negative 2. And then plugging 1 in there, we get 1 half to the first minus 3. And so that's 1 half minus 3. And 3 is the same as 6 halves. And so 1 half minus 6 halves is negative um, 5 halves. So we have the point negative 1, negative 1, and then 0, negative 2. And 1, negative 5 halves. Negative 5 halves is the same as negative 2 and 1 half. So this time, the function is going down as we move to the right and getting closer and closer to our asymptote without crossing it. And then just label the points in there. Our next one, we have 1 half raised to the x plus 2. So this is going to be shifting our graph up 2. And so my asymptote this time is going to be at y equals 2. So we're going to plot the same three points, negative 1, 0, and 1. Plugging negative 1 in there, we get 1 half raised to the negative first plus 2, which is 2 plus 2, or 4. And then 1 half to the 0 plus 2 is 1 plus 2, or 3. And then plugging 1 in there, we get 1 half plus 2, which is 2 and a half, or 5 halves. So we have negative 1, 4. 
we have 0, 3, and we have 1, 2 and a half. Okay, so the graph again is decreasing because our B is something that's between 0 and 1. And label our points on there. So these graphs are always going to have this general shape. They're always going to be shaped similar to this. Um, and they're going to be decreasing like this function is if this number in here is a number between 0 and 1. So 2 thirds or 1 half or 1 third, 1 fourth. Um, and if this number is a number that's greater than 1, so 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then um, the graph will be going up in this direction. So, and then if you have a number added outside here, it's going to shift the graph either up if it's positive or down if it's negative. If there's a number up in the exponent, then it shifts the graph left or right. It shifts it left for plus some number and um, to the right for minus some number. Our next graph, y equals negative 2 raise the x power, so you have to be careful because this is the same as doing negative 1 times 2 to the x. That's what it means when we don't have the um, parentheses there. So what is this negative 1 going to be doing to our graph in this situation? So we'll plot some points to find out. So we'll plot the three basic ones that we have been plotting. So we have negative 2 raise the negative first. And so that's negative 1 half. And then negative 2 to the 0, which is negative 1. And then negative 2 raised to the first, which is negative 2. So I have the point negative 1, negative 1 half. And 0, negative 1. And 1, negative 2. So this time, um, the graph you can see has been flipped um, across the x-axis. So we didn't shift it up or down. So y equals 0 is still our asymptote. And so this time it's getting really close to the x-axis but from down below. And then it gets really big this way really fast. And then just label our points. In our last example here, we have y equals uh, negative 1 fourth raised to the x. So again, that's negative 1 times 1 fourth to the x. And so be careful of that when you're plotting your points. There's a negative sign there. So again, we'll do the same three points that we've been doing. So plugging negative 1 in there, we get negative 1 fourth raised to the negative first, which is negative 4. And then negative 1 fourth to the 0 power, which is negative 1. And negative 1 fourth to the first power, which is negative 1 fourth. So we have negative 1, negative 4. And we have 0, negative 1. And we have 1, negative 1 fourth. So this time, it's um, getting really close to the x-axis again, but from the other side, and then really big down here. And so this really got reflected across both axes. So normally, a graph comes down like this. If we flip that over the x-axis, though, then it would be coming up like this, like our other graph did that we just did. Um, but this one is coming up from the other direction, which means that we flipped it over the y-axis and then we flipped it over the x-axis. So this one got flipped over both axes. And so that's because we had the negative sign out front that flipped something over the x-axis. And inside here we had 1 fourth, which means that it's a decreasing function coming down like this or being flipped over the y-axis. So again, just um, to summarize some things up here, 
Um, if you have a exponential function, and I'll put um, And so I don't know um, what letters to use here, but we'll use C and H. And so this negative sign would mean that you're flipping it across the x-axis. And so you can just plot these general points um, that we have here, and that will give you a good idea of what the graph looks like. This plus C will shift the graph um, to the left or right. So it shifts it to the left if it's positive and to the right if it's negative. And when you're doing that, then um, you might want to change these three points and either add. So if this is, um, if you have a plus one up here, you might want to um, just shift those accordingly. So plus one is going to be shifting it to the left, so you might want to shift all of these points to the left one unit and do negative two, negative one, zero instead of um, the points that we normally do. Um, and if you're shifting to the right, you might want to do the same thing. So all of these points would be getting shifted to the right um, if it was a minus there. And so you might want to just add um, whatever C is onto these three numbers. And then this is going to shift your graph up or down. Up, up if it's positive and down if it's negative. Okay, so that is it for graphing exponential functions. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.